Okay, I'm sure you clicked on this video because there's people that owe you money that have not paid you and that comes up with all kind of excuses on why they can't pay you. I'm going to give you three tips on how to handle people that owe you money. Tip number one, forgive the debt. Now, there's people out there that would loan people money. And because the loan is so small and sometimes it's quite hefty and they'd say, you know what? To keep from being bothered, keep the money, right? I just know next time not to loan you anything. You can't get anything else from me because you didn't pay back this loan. So there's people out there that would just forgive loans, okay? They don't want to deal with any problems. Um, they don't want to deal with the pressure of uh, trying to collect the money that's owed to them. So they just, just keep it. And I know next time not to loan you anything. Tip number two, take it to court. Now, there's people that will come to you to borrow money. Yes, it's good to text message them back and forth. I'll pay you. I'll give you your money. Where's my money? When you're going to pay me? Why are you sweating me? You have people that will get nasty with you. Owing you money. So it's good to document those things. It's good to get those things in text messages and emails, um, even voice recording to get that person's voice admitting that they owe you, saying that they're going to pay you. And then you take it to court. Now, you may lose a friend. You may lose a loved one, a family member, because family members, for some reason, feel because they are family, because that's your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, they feel they don't have to pay you back. Although they came to you, borrowed the money and said, I'll give it back to you when I get paid or I get back to you, give it back to you when I get my taxes. And then you never get the money back. They always have excuses or they ignore you. Um, like when I was coming up, my sister, my older sister would say, as long as I owe you, you'll never go broke. That used to eat me alive because she would borrow money from me. And then when I asked her about the money, she say, as long as I owe you, you'll never go broke. OK, of course, from that point on, she didn't get no more money from me. OK, so you can take that person to court. So either you forgive the debt or you take that person to court. Tip number three. Handle it like the mob. Now, that's something. I would do. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and break nobody's arm, break somebody's leg. I'm not saying to harm anybody. I'm just saying that's probably how I'd probably do it. Handle it like the mob because what people have to realize is business. It's not personal. And you have to make that known from the very start. Don't joke with them. Don't play with them. Don't smile around with them because if they think you're weak, if they think you're soft, then they're going to try to capitalize off of that. They're going to take advantage of your weakness. They're going to say, well, I don't have to worry about him. I don't have to worry about them or her. She's a nice person. I ain't worried about her coming after me. And it doesn't matter how small the loan is. If you agree to pay someone back, pay that person back. They become a debt. Let me give you an example. Actually, I'm going to share two examples with you of what could happen. And I always say, there's four things you don't violate. You don't harm someone's mom. You don't mess with somebody's mother. You don't mess with somebody's woman, a man's woman. You don't mess with somebody's children. And you don't mess with their money. Now, I shared a story in the past, or better yet, I'm going to leave that one alone. But just to share an idea, it doesn't matter how small it is. There's this guy, this drug dealer, came in my store one day, and he wanted a CD. The CDs were only five bucks. They're mixtape mix CDs. 
And he says to me, uh, let me get that CD until Friday. I'll pay you back. And I said, no, nah, you're good, man. He said, no, 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 no. I'll pay you back. And there's people that's insisting on paying you back, knowing that they're not going to pay you. And he kept insisting, I'm going to pay you back. I'll be here on Friday. I would never do that to you. Well, come Friday, I didn't see the guy. The next week passed, didn't see him. Next week passed, didn't see him. And then finally one day I saw him. Now I see this guy walking up and down the street. He's going to the corner stores, buying food, buying chips. And he's walking past, eating the food in front of me. Hey, what's going on, man? So I'm looking at him like, where's my money at? Oh, um, I got you, man. I, I, I got these bills to pay and I can't pay it. But yet he's going back and forth to these corner stores and I'm watching him. So this goes on for a while. Every time I see the guy, then the guy got nasty with me because I guess he felt that I was a nice guy. I'm always calm and he didn't have to worry about me. But then it got to a point where I had to click into my mob mentality, my street role. And so one day he's out there doing a drug deal. I pulled up on him so fast. Yo, man, where my money at? So now I had to take a totally different attitude with this dude. And he's like, man, it's only $5. You sweat me for $5. But that's not the point. It's the principle behind it. You don't take from me. If you tell me and if you're insisting on paying me back, you came to my store. And I told him, you came to my store, man. You asked me to borrow that. You said you were going to pay me on Friday. You know, well, I got bills to pay. Well, I'm a bill. I'm your bill now. So where's my money at? Right. I'm going to get you your money. So he ignored me. Continued on with his drug deal. So one day I went inside this Jamaican restaurant. Didn't know he was in there. But I walked in. He was standing in line. And I walked in. I was behind him. And I had my arms across like this, right? And I'm standing right in back of him. When he turned around, he turned around, looked dead in my face. Should have seen the expression on his face. Immediately, he went in his pocket. Yo, here, here's your money right here, man. I got you. I got your money right here, right? But it, it didn't have to go that far, man. If you borrow money from somebody, man, pay them back, right? And if I have a hard time trying to collect $5 from you, trust me, this, you never get anything else from me again. Never, ever, ever. I don't care if your kids are starving because you have people that would do that. They would use the children as a crutch for you to feel sorry, have compassion, because there's people, there's good hearted people that say, I don't want to see a, ch a child suffer. If I can help a child out, I'm going to help the child. It's not you, I'm going to help the child. But that person took their money and splurged it on other things, went out to clubs, alcohol, drugs, or what have you. And they ignore the fact that they owe you money. So there's, so there's people that will use their children as a crutch to get money out of you. But once you refuse to pay me back or I have to chase you, you don't ever have to worry about, and I'll, I'll remind you when you come back, can I borrow $10? Can I borrow $200? You owe me already. I'm going to pay you your money. You owe me. When you pay me my money back, then we can talk. But if they pay me the money back, nah, bro, you're not good on your word. Right. So you have to get in the mind frame that is business. It's not personal. Let me share one more story with you. I used to do work for the YMCA overnight because they have a residence here. They had two residents. They had a senior side and then they had another side. We had people that's out of prison, had no place to go. Um, drug dealers, uh, not drug dealers, but uh, drug addiction, people that's homeless. And I remember there was two guys, one that was from the senior side. He was an older guy that was after one of the guys that was on the regular resident side. And they were arguing about money that the guy on the senior side loaned to him. And the guy refused to allow the man on the elevator, told him he wasn't going to his room until he paid him his money. So they was about to fight in the hallway. So I told him, I said, yo, man. I said, you guys wait. You can't deny that man access to his room. 
You know, you have to let that man up, I said, and deal with it with management during the daytime. No, nah, he owed me money. He owed me money. So I got between the two of them and I took the dude upstairs and I shared with him some stories of when I was a little boy. And I told him, I said, I seen a man. I was about eight or nine years old and I seen a man get beat half to death with a hammer over two dollars. They were playing uh, cards, you know, the older men. And they end up arguing because the guy owed him two dollars and refused to pay. He's paying. And there's people that feel that they can just pay. They can just play games with you knowing that they owe you. And the man kept saying, I'm outside playing and I can hear it. I'm standing right at the window and I'm hearing like, I want my $2. I want my $2. Next thing you know, this guy come out, had knots all over his head, man. The guy is bloody. The guy went to work on a ha- with a hammer, right? So I explained this to this guy. I said, you don't mess with a guy's children. You don't mess with his woman. You don't mess with his mama. You don't mess with his money. So talk to the guy for a good 45 minutes. About a week later, when I came in, the guy that was at the front desk was nervous. His name was Bob. He was nervous. He was just panicking. Like, what happened? And he tells me that this dude, there was a guy that moved in. This guy looked like he was European. He was quiet, mind his own business, and um, never said nothing to nobody. So the same guy that I had just finished lecturing felt that he can knock on this man's door and borrow $200. I'll pay you back, right? So the guy was like, he was a nice guy. He didn't bother nobody. He was quiet, right? He was real quiet and, you know, do knocked on his door, bro, I'll pay you back. So the guy went, I guess it was for some drugs or whatever. The guy went and got the drugs and then he goes to the dude, you want to smoke this with me? Yeah. So they smoke together. And um, when it come time for this man to pay him back, the dude that borrowed the money was like, I ain't got to pay you all that money back because you smoked it with me. But see, that wasn't the agreement. The agreement was loan me two hundred dollars and I'll pay you back. So the guy was like, hey, man, where's my money? He was real soft spoken. Um, I'm not paying your money because you smoked it with me. Right. So this went on for a while. Long story short. One night, the guy was in the laundry room. He walked up real calm. Yo, man, when when am I going to get my money? You know, I'm not giving it to you. You smoked it with me, yada, yada, yada. So the guy pulled out a knife, stabbed the dude, walked away, looked at the guy laying on the floor, came back and just started jugging him, started jugging him. Guy ended up dying before they even took him out of the Y, right? Lost his life. There's a news article on that. Um, So, you know, you don't pay. So the man, the same dude that I finished lecturing, a week prior, lost his life because he borrowed money and refused to pay it back to people. See, that's that mob mentality. That mafia mentality is like, yo, you owe me. Where's my money? You know, you don't get my money. I'm going to break an arm. I'm going to break a leg. Or you could actually lose your life playing with people's money. So if you borrow money, and I make it very clear, number one, I don't loan people money. I just don't. That's how you lose friends. That's how you lose loved ones, um, you know, bitter relationships, because you got people that just feel they, they don't have to pay you back. So I don't I don't loan money to people. I just don't. Right. But. If I do, I'd rather give it to you. than to for you to borrow it from me and then don't pay it back. Because then I have to chase you. And I I don't like chasing people, right? I don't like having that mindset that where my money at? Because now I got to do something to you because you're making me look bad. I don't care how small it is. It could be $5. It could be $2. If I tell you now, go ahead and keep it, man. You good. And you insisting on telling me I'm going to pay you back. I'll say, look, man, I said, don't tell me you're going to pay me back because I'm going to be looking for it, right? And I'll pay you back. And then you don't pay me back. Now I have to take on a totally different attitude. And you're not going to like it. Right. So that's when and I coming up when I came up, man, listen, they would target your family, your children. You know, they would know where your kids go to school. Right. They will break an arm and leg. And especially you dudes out there that borrow money from women. 
because you feel this woman is working, she's got these kids, and then you go in to borrow money from them, right? And then don't pay them back. Well, if that woman's got a mob mentality, she got brothers and cousins and guys that would love to do. They next to you know you got somebody knocking on your door, yo man, you old Sheila man. I'm coming to get Sheila's money, man. When you gonna pay her? Right now you're nervous and you're trying to figure out why you ain't had to do that. Well, I wanted my money. You ain't pay me. Okay. Well, I need that money, bro. Or I'm gonna have to break something. Right. You know, and you ain't gonna like that because if women nowadays were smart, listen, ladies, if a guy borrows money from you and refuse to pay you back, if you got some connections, some friends, male friends, tell them like, listen, this man owes me $200. You get a cut out of what you collect. If you owe me, if you owe me $1,500, you get $500. Bring me a thousand back. Right. At least I got something. Right. Bring me 1500. You know, bring me a thousand. You keep 15. And there's guys that would do it for a whole lot less. See, so women, y'all need to wise up. Stop loaning these guys money. Right. And if you happen to borrow it, make sure you got a backup plan and collect it. Send your collectors after him. My mentality or. You can say, just keep it. Or. Just take them to court. So those are three ways to deal with people that owe you money. Right. So feedback. Tell me what you think until next time. And don't forget to subscribe and click on this link right here and order some some merch. I'm fearless.